What is going on guys, Crimson here, and welcome back to another video. Today we are here on Paladins, and I'm going to be going over the top 5 strongest front lines here in Paladins. As well as two honorable mentions, obviously. And, now, I kind of did, I, I did some research here and there. Some, like, here and there, as that implies. And... Some of these might be a little bit biased, but I tried to make it as unbiased as I possibly could, and yeah, that's about it. I tried making it unbiased, tried making it uh, fair and everything like that, so let's just go in. So, in our number five spot, we got Fernando. Fernando is not bad. He's really good for being like e like an easy... Uh, frontline, you know, someone for, so if you're trying to get used to playing f frontlines or tanks, he's a, almost a perfect one to get started on. Uh, his flame, flame lance does 35 damage per second, and has a follow-up damage of 200, like that carries on, like effect damage, and that goes on every two seconds he also has a shield that does 5,000 or that has up to 5,500 health and he shoots out a fireball that does 450 damage and with his last talent he has or not talent with his last ability he has a charge that does four that yeah that does 400 damage and it can be used as a good, like, like uh, mobility thing. Like, you could use it to uh, go forward, or you could use it to retreat. You know, some, something like that. Um, with his ultimate, it makes him immortal and prevents all of the teammates around him to drop below 100, yeah, 1500 health. So... If a Fernando uses it at the right time, it, it can actually save a lot of his teammates' lives. So that's actually really, really good. Uh, in like a, you know, in the kind of sense that a frontline, you know, what their ultimate would be, that's really good. And that's all for his, like, talents and everything. Or not talents, his abilities. I keep saying that. Now for his talents actual talents this time the first one is Aegis now Aegis actually allows the shield his barricade shield whatever to actually regenerate like it's not a cooldown so it can re you use it and then you can throw it back up at, if it still has enough energy to do so so it's kind of similar to Khan if you know how Khan's shield works and whatnot then his second talent is scorch now scorch actually deals more damage with the fireball it increases the damage and oh boy and it will lower the it increases the damage by 35 percent lowers the cooldown by a second and deals 20 percent more damage following the players that originally hit so as you can see there in the gameplay i'm i can't actually do a a voiceover so i have to improvise <laughs> so if i'm messing up in the gameplay it's that's why so just bear with me um and that's that's it for Scorch. And the last talent is Formidable. And Formidable actually adds a second charge, like, charge. And it will actually... It adds another 100 damage to the charge. And on top of that, it makes him immune to any crowd control that may happen to... Fernando as he's using the charge so as he's using the charge any crowd control that occurs 
won't have any effect on him whatsoever. Now, my personal favorite talent to run for him is Scorch. I actually like using Scorch much more than I like using Aegis, mainly because of the times that I've spent using his defensive way, his defensive, uh, yeah, his defensiveness, I guess, I've never actually really had fun, and I can't really seem to do anything, but the moment I used him in a sense for damage, I actually, I had a lot more fun, and I was doing much better, so, but that's just me, it could, you know, be very different for others, but I do think, I think he varies, like, there's, it's, it's a situational type of thing, if you've got, a, like, a, a tougher team to go against, then using Aegis would definitely be the better option, but if you've, you know, sitting there and you're, you're just playing casually and you want to actually, you know, just play for fun kind of thing, I would highly, highly, highly recommend going with Scorch. It's just, it's really fun. So, in the number four spot, we've got Barrack. Now, Barrack actually is my favorite, one of my favorite uh, frontline champions to play. I have him, he's my highest level. So, I tried really hard not to make this a biased one. But he, either way, any way you look at it, he really still is really strong for a frontline. His... Blunderbuss deals 500 damage every second that you shoot. His barricade that you can throw down holds up to 4,000 health. And his turrets deal 120 damage every second. Plus there are two that you can throw out. So that's, you can do the math. It adds up to a lot of damage on top of the damage that you're doing with your with your blunderbuss or shotgun, whatever it is. You know, on top of that damage, you got that extra 240. That that's that can be really good. Then you have rocket boots, which can actually allow him to do one of a few things. You can either charge forward. You can uh, escape. Now, me personally, I threw on the I threw on the shield that you can run using a using a card to make it so that way my escape is actually a lot more beneficial. Um, and that's it for his abilities. But that, but then you got his ultimate, which does. It's a dome with a turret in the center that has 10,000 health, and it can dish out 600 damage every second. So that's really good. That, that's a pretty good talent, or uh, uh, ultimate. But for his talents, you've got Forge Fire, which makes it so the ult actually costs significantly less. It only actually costs 40 to do the to do his ultimate and you can have two of his ultimates out of the out at the same time so if you save up that that 40 and make it up to like 90 or something you can set down two and it's perfect it it works his second talent is called Tinkerin, which will actually increase the damage that his blunderbuss does up but uh, up to 600 damage so it just increases by a hundred and it actually makes it so it's now a it makes it so his shotgun is now a slug shot so you know it can be it can be more accurate or it can be worse it, I the way I see it is it's actually better for range. You can keep a distance and you know still do a lot of damage. And then his last talent is Fortify. Now Fortify increases the health of his shield by two thousand, so it goes up to six thousand damage or er, health. And it 
It reduces the cooldown by three seconds. I'm... I don't know what I put in my notes. This looks weird. Uh, <laughs> but basically, Fortify just increases your the durability of your shield. That's really just about all it does, and it can be it can be pretty good. It can be helpful. You you can be useful. That's that's about it. So so for in the number three spot, we've got Torvald. Now Torvald is quite honestly one of my least favorite uh front lines in the whole game i do not like torvald at all so this is this is going to be the, probably one of the most unbiased ones here um with torvald his gauntlet deals 200 damage every 0 0.25 seconds so it can it can deal a good sum of damage if you you know if you really aim well <laughs> He has a nullify ability, which will deal up to 800 damage over two s over yeah over two seconds, and it silences the enemy. And if you don't know what silencing does, then you don't play the game because silencing makes it so that way the enemy cannot do anything. Pretty much, you like you can't. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can't do anything. It just stops all of your abilities from working so that's not fun he has a protection that's his third ability which that he throws out a shield to his teammates that holds up to 650 shield and that's about it it just it yeah, with a card, I believe, with the card, it can actually heal your teammates as well. So, with that, with the right setup, you can heal your teammates on top of uh, giving them some shield. And with his last talent, or last ability, you've got... I keep saying talent. With the last ability, you've got recharge. With, re with recharge, you can actually... Well, regenerate the shield, like, some of your shield your own shield and yeah it's just regenerating it's your own shield and it can regenerate up to 2,750 2, of your own shield with his ultimate you've got a hyper beam that does 60 damage every 0.1 second and as you've probably seen from the gameplay it has a hefty blast back, so you can use that to have some fun to send enemies flying off the map. As for his talents, you've got the first one, which is Thanks Grandpa, which is probably the better of all of, of, all of them. Which, that one just increases the um, amount of shield that is given to like by the, your protection to your teammates up to 300 or yeah increases it by 300 so it goes up to 600 no 950 uh, shield and it also reduces the cooldown by a second of your protection um, you've also got his second talent which is direct current which that just simply doubles the range that you can use nullify so that's 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 pretty good if you just want to be a dick that's about it uh and field study is his last talent which that will actually increase the damage done by your teammates once you have like if you put protection on your teammates it actually will increase the damage output that they do by 10%. So, if things Grandpa isn't something that you're really thinking of running, then field study would probably be the better thing to run if that's not what you're going to do. So, in the number two spot, we've got Azan. Why would my... My phone, of course, it has to go off. Um, so... Azan. Now, you might sit there and be like, okay, why Azan? He's got all these nerfs now. 
what makes him really that special. And I kind of was just looking over it and really just seeing the information. I wasn't really taking any information based on what I've given or what I've seen. I've just looked at what I've read, and this is what I have. So his hammer has a chain of damage that will go from... It has two strikes of 525 damage and a final strike of 630 damage. I cannot read my writing. Um, he has his second ability, which is called Reckoning, and that just sends out a projectile that deals 300 damage. He has his third ability, which is called Sanctuary, and that just places a whole bunch of, like a whole, I think it's like a whole, uh, segment of giant walls that will hold up to 2,500 health each, with each wall, and his last ability is called Conviction, and that just flies forward, and allows you to fly forward, and you deal, you can pick up a uh, teammate, or not teammates, enemies, pin them against a wall, and it can stun them. I don't think it does damage, but it can stun them if you hit them against the wall. And all of these abilities actually have passive benefits to them because of his ire. Now, if you don't know what his ire is, basically taking and dealing damage will increase like some sort of, um, like, I guess kind of energy. And this energy will allow him to well, deal more damage, so the damage output of his hammer, or the judgment, is actually, well, higher, it, 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 you know, it's not the same, it's not that, you know, just damage, it's actually more, um, his reckoning projectile, I believe the damage of that is also increased because of the ire, then you have his sanctuary, the individual health of each uh, wall is increased by the ire as well. And the speed at which you fly is increased because of his ire all the same. So his ire actually helps out in a lot of different ways. The last thing is his ultimate, which his ultimate is he throw he flies up to the sky, throws a hammer down, dealing, just as dealing damage, and applies some small knockback, and then immediately afterwards, you fly right back down, and do the exact same thing, deal more damage, apply more knockback, and it can be a good bit of damage too, I believe, so there's that, um, then for his talents, you got Persistence, which with that you just gain a 30% uh, lifesteal with your hammer. So like you, th any damage you deal with your hammer gives you a 30% increase in lifesteal. His second talent is called Tempering, and Tempering will actually increase... The, it, it strengthens all of your abilities, so there's that, as well as the ire, so that's crazy strong, but it comes at the cost of increasing the base cooldowns by 25%, so unless you're willing to sacrifice the rate that you're going to be doing all of your abilities until you have the max cooldown, or the max, uh, I don't remember what it's called, the, la the max cooldown, whatever. Uh, unless you're willing to do that, then that's, that's your choice. But his last talent is called Eternal, and with that, this is an interesting one, 
your ire will ne never decay. Now, it decays if you don't take if you don't take damage after a while, and if you don't deal damage after a while, it will begin to decay. And I mean, that's not always something you want to be doing if it gives you all these uh, passive benefits. So there's that. So with this talent, you know, it will never decay. However, there's also no passive benefits. So it will i think it just inc i think it will still increase the amount of damage that you can do but the benefits like you know making your conviction faster or your sanctuary have more health you know that stuff i don't think that's going to really have um any effect at all but like cuz those benefits will they won't be a thing anymore but I believe the damage that you deal with your hammer will still be the same. So, with our first honorable mention, we've got Atlas. Now, you might be surprised why I didn't put him in the top 5. And the whole reason why I didn't put him in the top 5 is actually because I think he's only strong if the person, if the player using Atlas is actually good with Atlas. Anybody who's not good with Atlas, including myself, I'm not good with Atlas, not in any means at all, uh, they could probably be incredible, but anybody, in, if Atlas is in the wrong hands, he could actually really badly hurt the uh, team he's on. I'm trying to think of a good way to word that, but I can't. So his cannon actually does 850, 840 damage every 1.4 seconds if it's max charge. Uh, if it's not max charge, just like a shotgun or a SMG, I think it's a shotgun. And yeah, it's you know, it's not bad. You could probably figure out some some ways to do it. Um, then you got his second ability which is called setback and setback actually will re it reverses your enemies so there's that like they can if they were at okay say say you you did a lot of, say say someone did a lot of damage to like a uh, a con, okay, and then your their healer then went and healed the con, and he's back at almost max. You can reverse the con, and I'm pretty sure it will lower his health back to almost nothing, allowing your teammate to get the kill again. His third talent it, er, ability is called Stasis Field, which that just puts a massive wall that is impossible to do anything with. You can't destroy it. You can't deal damage to it. Nothing. None of that. Instead, it just sits there and absorbs all damage. That's it. It just sits there and absorbs all damage. Um... Then his last ability is called Second Chance. And with that, if you are in a... Like, if you need to save yourself kind of thing. If you're taking a lot of damage and you need to save yourself, Second Chance will reverse yourself. And then all you gotta do is just... Well... Nothing really, because reversing yourself it heals you. You know, you can it puts your health back at whatever you last were before you needed to reverse. So, like, I don't I don't know how to, how to explain it. Like, if if you were taking a lot of damage you, and then you reverse and it and then it goes back to whenever you didn't start taking a lot of damage. It's it's about it. And then his ultimate will, well, it pauses your enemy, really, that's it. It's called Exile, and it, all it does is just pause, pauses your enemies, it's, yeah. 
for our second honorable mention, we've got McCullough. Now, this one could be surprising to some of you, but I I think that he almost would have deserved to be in the top five. I think he's really fun. He's really strong. He doesn't have that much of a of a skill like skill gap. He doesn't he doesn't take that much like like people say all the time that he does because his 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 anchor. But because you gotta hit that if you don't hit that hook properly, then you're you're screwed. But not really. I mean I mean it's not that difficult to hit. Um, but so going over his abilities, we've we've got his cannon. Which, his cannon deals 575 damage every single second. So, there's there's that. Then, his anchor... I mean, as I was just talking about it, his anchor will... Pull the enemy towards you. Stuns them for a moment. And then... I think it... Yeah, it does 100 damage on top of that, so... There's a chance that you could get a very funny kill if you can kill them with the anchor before you pull them in. Uh, his third ability is called Shell Shield, which that, as you would expect, just is a shield. It's a big shield, and it can actually... it You can keep a lot of teammates safe because it's a big dome. Still into like barrack stone, but not. And uh, there, yeah. Uh, his last ability is called shell spin, which that does 500 damage, and it has a knockback. I also forgot to mention that his shield holds up to 4,000 HP. Forgot to mention that. His ultimate is a melee. It's called Ancient Rage. And it increases your health. And uh, your the hammer, or your, your anchor is what the melee is. And it deals 550 damage per swing. And coming in at our number one spot, we've got Inara. Now, this is... Not what I think it should be, but it is. This is she's apparently the strongest. So her little stone spear is a three burst that deals uh, uh 225 damage every 1.25 seconds each. Each of the little shards that she shoots out. In the burst, deal the 225. So, I can't math. So, you can do that yourself. I think that's about 700, but I could be very wrong. Um, she has her second ability, which is called Earthen Guard. Now, this one is an interesting one, because this one... Reduces the damage that she takes. It also increases the amount of healing that she gains while she's in Earthing Guard. Um, so, I mean, if used properly, she can have very good sustain. So, there's that. Um, her third ability is called Impasse. And Impasse just places a giant wall... That you can take down. The wall has up to 5,500 health. And sometimes can be annoying. But like like if you're, if you're not playing Anara, it can be annoying. And dealing with Anara on your team. that can. But I've seen people who've used an Anara to like launch themselves with the wall. So there's that as well, I guess. And her final ability is called Warder's Field. Now, Warder's Field is basically just a rock totem that slows enemies that enter the, the radius 
and it deals 150 damage every one second to the enemies that are in the field. So there's that as well. Now I believe the 150. It's not like an instant thing. It's like a gradual thing. I'm pretty sure. So there's that. With her ultimate, she launches a spear that pierces shields, stuns the enemy, and deals up to 550 damage to whomever it hits. So that can be a pretty strong one, uh, depending on who, like whose shield it is. Like if it's a Fernando or a Khan, that's a pretty nasty. That's a pretty nasty uh, ultimate to try and deal against. With her different talents, you've got Mother's Grace, which basically everything that I said about Earthen Guard, you know, that it, you know, reduces the amount of damage you take and increases the amount of healing you receive. Yeah, you can take that and it reduces the damage by 15% and increases the damage, no, the healing gained by 20%, as well as making you immune to all crowd control. Crowd control being like, uh, I think that's like like knockback, stun, flame, poison, stuff like that. Fear, I think fear. So, yeah. Uh, then you got her second talent, which is tremors. Which basically tremors, in my opinion, is her worst talent. I don't think tremors is good at all. Well. Actually, no, maybe, maybe it, it might be good in some senses, I guess. But Tremors is basically you have two walls that you can throw up. And these walls you cannot take down. So her base walls, you can. You can throw them up and you can drop them right back down. But her... With this with this talent, you if you try that, you won't be able to. You just have two walls that you can put up. And they, they stay up. But the cooldown is reduced to down to 12 seconds. And the last talent is called Treacherous Ground. Which basically just increases the radius of your water's field. And it will cripple. Or increases the, increases the radius of water's field by 50%. And it cripples... The enemies that walk into it, as well as I still think, have giving that uh, 150 damage, or not 150. The was it 150? Yeah, the 150 damage overall. So, yeah. And that's my that's the 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 top the top five list. If there's if any of your favorite front lines didn't make it in. Then I'm sorry. Don't flame me if you don't agree with with these. These are just what I've been able to gather and what I believe personally where I believe they should be. So there's that. If you wanna, if you do wanna see, because I, I have it planned, I'm gonna be doing this for the other three different roles. So if you wanna see that, then. I guess likes don't really matter, so I guess you can comment down below or something. I, I don't know. I don't think likes matter anymore, but I could be wrong. Uh, anyways, so I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.